is getting two grants worth more than $2 million. The money goes toward the development of new personal protective equipment for Ohioans working in fields that require additional protection on the job. One of those is focusing on cooling technology for firefighters uniforms, which would be a huge, huge benefit. All right, 608 and the end of an era for the flagship Jeff Ruby's Steakhouse. They hosted final dinner service last night. The Steakhouse is moving not very far away to a new location near Fountain Square. The original right there near the Aronoff Center opened on Walnut Street in 1999. For those who work there, part of the Ruby family, this is no ending, just a new beginning. I think some people are sad and I keep trying to remind people that we're not mourning this space, that it is going to become an event center very soon and we're going to host even more people. I'm feeling blessed, excited that um, we're, we're even in this position and that we have this great opportunity. So no tears here at Jeff Ruby Steakhouse on 7th Street. So the new location is going to open inside the foundry. That's the former Macy's building downtown. The Walnut Street space is getting converted, as you heard, into a full service event center. We'll see how that shapes out. Today's the final day for you to visit a piece of World War II history docked at Sawyer Point. The LST 325 is that 300 foot long landing ship tank. It opens for tours at 9 a.m. Once it's done today, it heads back to the home port of Evansville, Indiana. This is the only LST left today that is still operational. More than a thousand of the ships, though, were built during the war. And let's give you a live look at Great American Ballpark this morning. It'll be lit up. They'll be playing nighttime ball here tonight, and the Cincinnati Reds will try to avoid a dubious record. The Reds, the oldest professional baseball team, have only lost 100 games once in its entire history, but with a loss tonight, they would cross that threshold for a second time. The Reds open up the final series of the season against the Chicago Cubs. The record right now for the Reds, 60 wins, 99 losses. The most losses in team history came in 1982. That was 101. So this is a three game series. They could end up eclipsing that mark. We'll keep our fingers crossed. They don't. Tonight's game starts at 640. Jen. Ooh, all right. Well, what will it be like at 640 as you remember we out there at the ball game? 65 degrees is where we start. And then once the sun sets, oh, that temperature falls rather quickly. By nine, we're only at 55 midnight. I mean, obviously the game will be over at that point unless this thing really goes into extra innings, but maybe the upper 40s. So it's a cooler day and we've got plenty of sunshine to enjoy. But where will our actual highs end up today and for the week ahead? I've got everything you need to know to plan out your work week ahead. Thanks, Jen. A new term starts today for the U.S. Supreme Court. The first case on the docket for the justices, including an all new face and she is hearing an argument for the very first time. Seniors on Social Security are set to receive a major cost of living adjustment in the new year because of inflation. How high could your Social Security check go? We break it down next. It is 614 and today marks the new term of the U.S. Supreme Court featuring the first African-American woman on the bench, Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson and the rest of the court will hear an affirmative action case involving minority admissions programs at Harvard and the University of North Carolina. The man accused of killing six people in the Waukesha Christmas Parade in Wisconsin will represent himself at trial. It starts today. Last week, a judge ruled that Daryl Brooks was competent to take over his own defense. A letter from Brooks's own mother says he is mentally unstable to represent himself. King Charles III will not attend an international climate summit next month. Buckingham Palace said the decision was made between the palace and the government. King Charles attended this summit in the past. The environment has been a long, long term issue for the new king. All right, here it's turning 615 weather, not something in climate, not something we have to technically worry about this morning. The traffic was terrible yeah, earlier. It was my bad. goodness. Yeah, I'm glad it's over. It is over with the red is turned back to green back to green. Things are all okay. clear. Yeah. yeah, that Brent Spence bridge photo. We said it in the bread. I was like, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah, a terrible looking shot. Well, and you know, it's bad. So Brandon last night texted me to make sure that when I woke up, I knew that that construction mm -hmm. was happening because it was backed up for miles. He said even last night at 11. Wow. And that's a time of day where there shouldn't be a lot shouldn't of traffic, be an issue, right. right? So the fact that those cones are gone. 
goodness. We will take it. Yes. And we have sunshine, clear skies, and really a great looking Monday forecast for you. The remnants of Ian are now moving far away, and that is leaving us with just sunshine, ideal temperatures. I mean, this is the kind of Monday forecast that like make a mental note. Enjoy today, set it in your memory and bring this up in January and February whenever we're just hating winter. Like these are the days we want to remember. 48 is that temperature out the door right now in Cincinnati. 47 for Maysville, Hillsboro, 42 in Wilmington, and 45 this morning for Dry Ridge. Now, there is just a little bit of a breeze out there. You notice it over the weekend, still a touch of a breeze out there this morning at 9 miles per hour in the city, even 12 miles per hour for Alexandria. But as the day goes on, this wind will settle down a little bit as those remnants of Ian get farther and farther away. So then we just roll through sunshine and a high near the 70 degree mark this afternoon. This works. It really does. And guess what? If you're busy today and you can't get outside, well, guess what? I have Tuesday for you to enjoy as well. I mean, tonight we are down a little bit cooler into the low 40s, but then tomorrow we'll see a high right again around the 70 degree mark. Tons of sunshine, light winds, no discernible or detectable humidity. It just it's going to be Beautiful. Now, eventually this week, we are going to see a cold front coming into the tri-state and this thing I'm telling you now, this is your nine first warning. This cold front will make a huge difference in comfort levels by the end of the week. So if you want to enjoy these low 70s, the time is upon you to take advantage of it because by Wednesday clouds will be increasing and especially for Thursday's forecast, we will see some passing clouds ahead of that boundary. The boundary then comes through. Now, granted, it's moving into very dry air, so it's not like the atmosphere, even as it lifts and that cold front comes through, it's going to have a really hard time getting a lot of rain to come out of this. Could we see a few isolated showers? Yeah, sure, maybe, but the bigger thing that this boundary is going to do, it is going to unleash cold air. And I'm not just talking a few degrees cooler, something a little here and there. I mean, we're talking about a massive swing in temperatures. So the fact that today, tomorrow and Wednesday, we're low 70s to mid 70s, Stunning comfort to be found in the afternoons easily each of these days. I mean, even Wednesday there before the clouds are coming in, it'll be a nice looking day. But then Thursday, yes, it's still warm. You'll have that cloud cover though increasing and then rain chances keeping it at a 30% chance just in case we do get a little bit more to show up in the models with time. But the reality is we go from the mid 70s to 15 degrees colder the next day at only 60. And this is a sharp decline even for this time of year, but it's those overnight temperatures that must get your attention. This is why you might have to kick on the heat this week. We'll be in the upper 30s to mid 30s by the beginning of the coming weekend. Well, let's get back out to travel this morning where hopefully those improvements continue to roll, Taylor. Yes, and that's exactly what we're seeing. If you look across the tri-state, not looking at any delays right now. However, on 275, there is a crash at US 42. That's exit 46, not leading to any backups right now, but we'll keep you updated if that changes. As of right now, all of our morning drive times are on time. Thanks, Taylor. It's 618 and some economists predict inflation will not be where it is supposed to be until about 2024. But still, there's some help on the way for some Americans. Our Joe St. George has a closer look at the cost of living adjustments for the millions of older Americans on Social Security. We talk a lot about inflation on the news and for good reason. It's something that impacts each and every one of our families here on Capitol Hill. Lawmakers talk a lot about inflation too. Republicans have ideas that they take back control of Congress this November to cut spending in the new year to help inflation. Democrats talk about new government programs to offset the high costs if they're able to keep control. But all of those ideas require months of debate, most likely, as well as the necessary votes. And they may not happen, which is why it's refreshing to hear real inflation relief may be on the horizon that won't require a vote from Congress. What am I talking about? Bear with me because I'm going to say something really boring. Cost of living adjustments. It may sound a bit dry, but if you're an older American on Social Security, I know you're listening. You see, cost of living adjustments are the increase in pay Americans on Social Security receive each year. Think of it like a raise while in retirement. Cost of living adjustments are based on the consumer price index, which measures inflation and has been at 40 year highs for most of the year. Right now, the expectation is the adjustment in 2023 will be 8.7%. So if you get a $1,000 check every month, that's 
87 more dollars for you. Right now, it's just an estimate what the raise will be for those on Social Security. We're waiting on one more inflation report before the numbers are final. That's expected on October 13th. Of course, many older Americans see each year their annual cost of living adjustments wiped out by Medicare increases. But there is relief on that front, too. President Biden announced last week that Medicare Part B premiums will actually go down in the new year for the first time in over a decade. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. All right, thanks to Joe for that. High-tech help for women hoping to recover after breast cancer. How it's making a common side effect of surgery easier to treat. And where there's smoke, there's fire. Budding support in the Commonwealth for medical marijuana. Now, Governor Bashir is hoping this new survey will persuade lawmakers. Here at 624, it is time for a look at that bus stop forecast. A little hooded sweatshirt or a jacket for the kids. Not a terrible call this morning, but if they're in a rush, eh, it'll be fine coming home from school today. One less item to lose at school. The temperature will come in near the 70 degree mark today, and we get tons of sunshine. Great afternoon to do some stuff outside, even after school. Coming up, though, we need to talk about what mornings this week will be a little bit on the cold side here in the tri-state. Thanks, Jen. October, of course, is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and for some survivors, they can experience a painful swelling of their arms or hands after undergoing surgery or radiation. The condition is called lymphedema. Researchers at the Cleveland Clinic have, really, have developed a new device. It uses low-level electrical currents for early detection, which makes the condition easier to treat. Lymphedema can cause really discomfort. It can cause loss of function. Women can have trouble lifting their arm or using their hand. It can lead to secondary infections of the arm called lymphangitis and really have a significant imp psychosocial impact and quality of life impact. Now, researchers say the take home message for those who underwent treatment for breast cancer is to be proactive about the risk for lymphedema and talk to their physician if they have any concerns. Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir says an overwhelming majority of people in the Commonwealth support medical marijuana. The governor said a new report from his Medical Cannabis Advisory Committee showed 98.5% of the 3,500 responses were in favor, just 1.5% against. Bashir formed the Medical Cannabis Advisory Committee earlier this year after a bill to legalize medical marijuana in the state died in the Senate. All right, making sure your help gets to where it is needed, how you can ensure your donation in the wake of Hurricane Ian goes to those who are truly counting on it now. Calm and quiet right now outside Cincinnati Police Headquarters in the West End, but that's all about to change. Why they're hosting a breakfast this morning and the charities it benefits. And going old school, a simple fix that can prevent a major loss for local car owners so you don't waste your money. sunrises and sunsets over the weekend due to remnants of Hurricane Ian, but now the sunshine is back. What does that mean for temps? Picking up the pieces. Recovery efforts in Florida following Hurricane Ian as the president and first lady start their tour of another hard hit region. We rushed to the semi truck, which was spilling diesel fuel everywhere. A teen driver critically injured in a northern Kentucky crash. How witnesses put their own lives at risk to help. Break for breakfast. Why you might want to stop by Cincinnati Police Headquarters this morning to benefit local charities. Here's a live look outside here at 630. You probably want a light jacket, maybe the sweater with you. The temperatures in the upper 40s at the moment, but we got a lot of sunshine to warm things up quickly today. Good morning, Tri-State. It's Monday, October 3rd. I'm Adrian Whitsett. We've got nine first warning meteorologist Jennifer Ketchmark live outside looking at where we go from here. <laughs> Coffee in hand to warm up the hands. Listen, I had to keep my hands warm as I'm standing up here. It's a light jacket will do wonders for you as you head out the door this morning. It is on the cool side. We've even got colder nights still to come this week. But as you get that live look outside, I mean, the sky is clear. That's the view up at Kings Island where they've been doing, you know, Halloween hot this time of year. The sky even here downtown totally clear. So yay for sunshine today. But the temperature 48 in the city, 
but not terrible, but 44 in Florence, 43 in Connersville, and 42 right now in Wilmington. But we head to 70. This jacket completely unnecessary later on this afternoon. That sunshine makes it great to sit out there in the sun. Um, by later this evening, I know we've got the Reds in town as well this evening. By 7, though, it'll only be 55 and cooling quickly. So where we bottom out tonight and when you might actually need to turn on the heat. Oh, we got to talk about it coming up. But first, let's check in with Taylor Nemo, who's covering traffic for us this morning. Any issues out there at this moment? morning, Taylor? Well, in terms of delays, we're not looking at anything right now across the tri-state. You can see we've got plenty of green on the map. We had 7175 was backed up earlier. That has since been cleared. However, on 275, there is a crash at US 42 at exit 46. That's not backing up traffic yet, but we'll continue to monitor that. As of right now, all of our morning drive times are running on time currently. Thank you, Taylor. Happening today, the trial of George Wagner IV for murder in Pike County continues with cross-examinations of witnesses. The defense cross-examining the mother of Frankie Roden's first child, Chelsea Robinson. Roden and seven other members of the Roden Gilly families were murdered in 2016. At the center of the case, the relationship between George's brother, Jake Wagner, and Hannah Roden, as well as custody of their child. Jurors heard testimony of Wagner's, quote, controlling nature. Some saying he tried to keep Roden away from her father. George Wagner IV has been charged with eight counts of murder. You can watch this trial live wherever you stream us. Just download the WCPO 9 News app to do so. We'll continue to stream this trial daily until the jury reaches its verdict. Also, a trial starts today for the Westchester man charged in a quadruple murder in 2019. Jury selection should happen today in the trial against 40-year-old Gurpreet Singh. It's supposed to happen this morning. He's accused of shooting and killing his wife, then her parents and her aunt in April 2019. It happened after prosecutors alleged he called 911 saying he found their bodies. Officers arrested him for the crime months later. He faces the death penalty if convicted by the jury. Developing now search and rescue as well as cleanup efforts continue in Florida this morning. As of Sunday, 800,000 people are still without power. Fort Myers Beach will be closed for at least the rest of this week to help first responders comb through one of the hardest hit areas. The recovery there, though, will take months. Access to Sanibel Island is still cut off. Portions of that causeway collapsed during the storm as it made landfall. We certainly hope that we can continue to find more people alive and bring them out. Uh, we're going to support the state and their needs as we continue to go house by house um, and make sure that everybody's accounted for. There has been some criticism that the officials in Lee County issued their mandatory evacuation orders too late. At least 42 of the deaths attributed to Hurricane Ian came from Lee County. The Sheriff's Department says more than 800 rescues have been made in the county so far. And happening today, the President and First Lady will travel to areas devastated by another hurricane. They'll be in Puerto Rico today, viewing the destruction caused by Hurricane Fiona. More than 100,000 people on that island are still without power. The Bidens then heading to Florida to look at the aftermath of Hurricane Ian on Wednesday. If you'd like to help the relief efforts for Hurricane Ian, just be careful how you do it and who you're sending the money to. The FCC says government disaster agencies do not call nor do they text for your financial information. There's also no fee to apply for government help. Make sure that the money you're sending is going to trusted well-known charities and verify the information online. One very safe and reliable way to donate is through the Scripps Howard Fund Hurricane Ian Relief. This is the philanthropic arm of the EW Scripps company that owns WCPO 9. You can text the word STORM to 50155. You can also hit up the QR code right there on your screen on the bottom left with your phone right now. I'm slowing down so you can do that if you don't have your phone in your hand. This is all going, the money that is, to the folks hit the hardest by the hurricane. This fundraising effort, though, is limited. It ends tomorrow night at 11:30, so get in there if you can. It's 6:35 now and this morning we're working to learn more about the condition of a young driver in Cold Spring taken to the hospital in critical condition after a crash with a semi on Sunday evening. Police have not released the name of the driver because they're a juvenile, but we do know last at last check they were in critical condition. We're working to find out more this morning. We did speak to a witness who was driving at the time almost part of the crash himself. Hunter Fangman was with his mom and his girlfriend when he watched this happen. He drove to a nearby parking lot and then he and his mom ran to help. Me and my mom jumped out and we rushed to the semi truck, which was spilling diesel fuel everywhere. So we opened up the door. We're checking on the guy. He's still conscious. Uh, he was very shooken up. 
very worried about the other vehicle and how they were doing. Fangman told our crew he watched his crews use the jaws of life to get this young driver out. The semi driver was also taken to the hospital. We're told that was just as a precaution. A motorcyclist died in a weekend crash in Warren County. 61 year old Anthony Kinney, according to investigators, lost control of his motorcycle on State Route 73 near Waynesville, hit a culvert and was thrown to the ground. He died at the scene. Investigators said Kinney was not wearing a helmet. The crash itself is still under investigation. All right, if you're looking for a career where maybe you can make a difference, Kentucky State Police want some more troopers. Taylor's back now. We're looking at some of the changes for this upcoming class of recruits. Hey, Taylor. Adrian, the application is now open for new officers with Kentucky State Police, and the agency is hiring for troopers in 2023, and officials say it's a great way to accelerate your career. Now, this year's class comes with an increase in salaries starting at $61,500, and that's the highest starting salary the agency has ever had. Officials say there's also a new and improved retirement system that includes a sick leave buyback program, and in addition to applying to become a new officer, you can also apply for the Law Enforcement Accelerated Program to help you catch up before the start of the new class of cadets at the Kentucky State Police Academy in Frankfurt. Now, that's set to begin on February 20th, of 2023. So if you're interested, you can download the application on the KSP's website. That's KentuckyStatePolice.org. Now cadets are paid and receive benefits during the academy. If you have any questions, uh, requirements and qualifications to apply can also be found on the website. Now the deadline to apply is October 28th. Taylor, thank you. Happening right now, taking a break for breakfast. The Cincinnati Police Department hosting this breakfast to raise money for breast cancer awareness. WCPO 9 News' Ali Kramer is live from District 1 Police Headquarters. We talked about this an hour ago, Ali, and it looks like the folks got the grill fired up and ready here now. Okay, this is a well-oiled machine. They are getting ready to start making breakfast this morning, but I want to kind of show you uh, the members of the Cincinnati Police Department that are already kind of getting things ready. And uh, you'll notice on the back of uh, this woman's shirt, back the rack. That is one of the initiatives that they are raising money for today. It's an internal initiative that actually raises money for members of the Cincinnati Police Department who are currently battling breast cancer, uh, either themselves or within their families. So just one of the ways that they're going to be raising money also for real men wear pink the campaign that they launched last week so you'll see officers wearing pink badges you'll see kind of the pink banners on the fire department trucks uh, you know what a lot of efforts to just simply raise awareness during October breast cancer awareness month and uh, okay we talked about the griddles at least they're out here the generators ready volunteers from Cincinnati cooks are going to be the ones that are making the breakfast this morning ten dollars it's going to be in a to-go box pink pancakes sausage and eggs already so that all you have to do is really drive through, pick it up and head out. We will continue to kind of stay here and hang out. You'll see everything else unfolding on Twitter in just a little bit as soon as those breakfasts are ready. Guys, for now, we'll send it back to you. Allie Kramer reporting live at District 1 headquarters. Thank you. Still ahead, more missing documents. The National Archives still awaiting former President Trump's delivery of them. What is included in this new stack, they say? I'm John Mattery. Some Kias and Hyundais are missing something from their key fobs that make them easy to steal. I'll tell you what the automakers are doing to fix the problem. Coming up. Well, compared to the weekend, it actually is running a little cooler outside. We're about four degrees cooler in the city, but Batavia, 10 degrees colder. It's enough that you'll actually notice the difference out there. But guess what? I've got good news. We're back to 70 today with sunshine. But how long does this good stretch of days last? It's ahead in your nine first morning forecast. Come into our Lawn and Garden Center at Jamie's Landscaping and you'll find everything you need from mulch, fertilizer, and one of the best selections of natural stone. Jamie's Landscaping has you covered. It is 643 looking at some of our top stories. The National Archives says it is awaiting documents that should have been turned over by former President Donald Trump. The acting archivist said the missing documents include electronic messages sent using personal email accounts. It comes, of course, amid a court battle over documents seized by the FBI 
at the former president's Florida estate. Opening statements start today against the founder of the Oath Keepers and several other men in connection to the January 6th insurrection attempt at the Capitol. Stuart Rhodes and the others face seditious conspiracy charges and up to 20 years in prison apiece. The juvenile accused of hitting and killing UC student Caden Turner and seriously injuring her roommate Wednesday will appear in juvenile court today. It's a 17-year-old suspect who we're not naming because of his age. He was arrested Friday, charged with aggravated vehicular manslaughter. Many owners of Kia and Hyundai vehicles have been nervous ever since viral videos began spreading about how easy it is to steal them. Well, now there is finally a fix. Rebecca Perry is among hundreds of Kia and Hyundai owners whose cars have been stolen this year. You took away something that I called mine. Her 2019 Kia Soul, stolen and wrecked. Police blame a social media trend, showing teens how easy it can be to... To start a car and be gone within 20 seconds. So why are thieves just targeting certain Kias and Hyundais? Well, experts say unlike this vehicle and most other new cars, their keys don't have a computer chip that makes it almost impossible to start the car without the key. There's actually an electronic communication between this key and the vehicle. Matt Overbeck is a certified mechanic and repair shop owner. He says unlike these high-tech keys in some Kias and Hyundais. They've eliminated some of the anti-theft devices, um, immobilizer systems that are commonly found on a lot of modern vehicles. Some police departments are urging owners to purchase old school steering wheel locks like the club. But Kia and Hyundai say they are now offering a more permanent fix.